Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Kajal and thank you for all the support on my last video. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll add a link somewhere here so you can check it out. It's a video about mentorship with my mentor, Terry. For today's video, I'm interviewing a friend of mine, Camille. She's a robot operation engineer at Brain. She is an amazing artist. She has helped me draw so much better than what I used to. In today's video, we talk about her high school experience and then her dilemma about whether to go for arts or a STEM degree and what are the factors that influenced her to make her choice. And once she gets through college, we will talk about her struggles in finding her first job. So keep on watching. Hey everyone, my name is Kajal and this is Camille. Hello. Let's start with a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um... I grew up in San Francisco and I went to UC Riverside for undergrad and then I started working in San Diego for a defense contractor. At that point then I came to Brain. Um, okay, let's start with high school. So how was high school like? High school is a really hard time like when you're young and you feel like you have to fit in with everyone else and then when you grow up and you get older it's really good to be different. So it's like this weird, oh, I want to fit in. And then when you get older, just kidding, I don't want to fit in. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to that. I think for most of us in high school, like you said, we're trying to figure out who we are, what we are. Mm, yeah, I think like especially how I am now versus high school is like, don't be afraid to uh, be proud of what you like, whether it be Sports, video games, makeup, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Do yeah. you. You do you. Yeah, you do you. <laughs> you do you. <laughs> so were there any activities or video games or sports that you played when you were in high school? I actually did Dragon Boat when I was in high school. Dragon Boat, uh, for the people that don't know, is a water sport um, similar to paddling or canoeing. Um, where you have 20 people on a boat and you do a two-minute race. Two minutes. Two minutes. Um, you spend all this time, all these, like, three months practicing for two and a half minutes. So it's a pretty intense sport, and it's also just, like, a lot of pressure, a lot of pushing yourself, and um, it helped me gain more confidence, like, especially as a high schooler growing up. <laughs> but... Also, it's hard. It was very intense. <laughs> I don't think I would do it now. I do a more lazy man version of it in my current life. So Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so after high school, what did you do in your college? So when I was in high school, I actually really loved art, literature. Um, I was very creative. But then I realized that I probably wouldn't really have a good time making a living out of it. So I was like, okay, what interests me? Um, my dad is a sound engineer. So I started looking at engineering and I thought it was really interesting just going through design and kind of, um, I guess, a more logical approach to things versus just being all head in the clouds. After my first year of college, I decided, okay, I wanted to do engineering, I want to do STEM, or something like STEM. So right after I graduated, I immediately started looking for a job. Um, I didn't want to move back home. I wanted to be able to be independent and support myself, especially in my last year of college. I started um, delving into internships and talking to people, especially um, friends of my dad or who were engineers as well as like going to career fairs and getting involved and trying to understand what it would be like if I were to go off and do industry versus going um, into academia. So uh, I feel like there are more options when you, um, when you go into industry versus academia in the fact that you can see real life people um, interact with what you're working on. So like for example, um, we would go to a Walmart 
and we can see our machine and we can see how it's affecting people's lives and I think that's really incredible versus academia where you um, you're doing like you're finding a brand new like thing that no one has ever seen before but at the same time it's very abstract you don't really see it in the real world it's of course it has lots of applications but you're not I guess like for me I like being able to interact with and see my work pay off or see where my work is going towards that makes sense yeah so what so after having these conversations and deciding that you want to go for corporate what was the experience like going to career fairs or you know reaching out to people saying hey I'm looking for a job it's hard no matter what because people want someone with experience you don't have experience they don't want you so it's a whole chicken and egg situation where it's like I need a job but I need experience to get a job literally just spammed everything I was like I was applying online I was going to job fairs I was talking to engineers I was trying basically trying to just get my foot in the door somewhere and then be able to build myself up from there because it hurts when you get ghosted it hurts when you get rejected and you're gonna get rejected a lot it sucks but the thing is you only need one yes right so um, my first company was a government contractor for Spay War, um, which is uh, the US Navy in San Diego. Okay. I started working on network communications and satellite communications for the Navy, which I thought was pretty cool at the time. I mean, it's still kind of cool, but you know, robots are pretty cool too, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing I want to talk to you about is your creative side. You mentioned you were a lot into art in school. Yes. And I have personally seen you do a lot of amazing art pieces. <laughs> so how do you keep your artistic side alive now that you've gotten into more engineering and logical side in work environment? I think um, especially outside of work, um, honestly, it's being able to pace yourself. Um, you I used to be one of those people that would spend six hours straight on a painting and then be like, okay, I'm done. I now realize that that is not the way to do it. <laughs> you have, you have, you don't put a time limit on your creativity. Um, I, there's always, there's something called artist block in a lot of the art world is that when you're trying to finish something and you're just banging your head against the wall and you can't figure out what you want to do with a piece and you just kind of go down this spiral and you're like, oh my God, I can't think of anything. But honestly, from what I've learned is that you have to take your time with things. Um, like I've been working on a piece for a while now, but it's been on the back burner because of so many other things that come up in life, right? Because things come up in life all the time. So um, just be okay with like taking a break from it sometimes and then coming back to it, being like, and once you come back to it, you can be like, okay, like I will, I can see what direction I want to take this now. After having that time to take a break and reflect, and then you can add onto that piece until you feel like it's complete. Yeah, that sounds something yeah, interesting. Awesome. Taking breaks is important, kids. Drafts are very important. Drafts <laughs> are super important. Don't just go things one on one. <laughs> it's not going to work out. At least from what I've learned. Unless you're in school and you have to submit an assignment. Yeah, then, then you know, whatever. Then you just got to go. <laughs> 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 you just got to do it. <laughs> yeah, I would but agree. So let's bring it all to a conclusion. You started with high school trying to learn to fit in, only to realize that gr after you grow up, it's better to not fit in. I would say it's great to be extraordinary and not just ordinary. Don't try to fit in. Just be, be yourself. Sometimes it's really hard to be yourself, but you really should just be yourself. Just be yourself. It's, it's a really cliche, but it is very true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Cliches are true. And you only realize that after you've gone through them. Yes, exactly. And then we talked about how you went from graduating to getting your first job, which is always difficult, but keep at it. Maybe it'll take a month or two months, but eventually it, you'll get it. It might take six months. It could take a year. It yes. really depends. And another thing is also like everybody is different. Go at your pace. 
Measure yourself by your past self and not by the people around you. That is a great quote. <laughs> Don't measure yourself with the people around you. Use them as motivation. Use them to see where you can be. I, I don't know about how often I'm going to publish this, but the whole point of me doing this is to help others out there look at these really amazing people and use them as role models and learn from them. I do hope you get something from this and I would love to hear from you to see how this helps you or what is it that would help you and maybe I can bring it to you. So thank you for watching and once again this is Camille. Hi, thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>